first of all thank you and a very good morning to all of you i think the stage is perfectly set uh, by uh, professor gudar and jed who spoke earlier about the ip issues in this technology domain so what i'll cover is how we as industry see this technology moving forward and what are the issues basically we see when we try to inculcate uh, the AI aspect into the solutions we offer. So I would just briefly start with the broader definition of artificial intelligence. The way we see it is any process that's executed you at least using one or more process processors and that makes life easy. That's what we categorize under artificial intelligence. But I do have a technical definition lined up for artificial intelligence because in case you have seen the Three Idiots movie, I don't want Professor to throw me outside of this room. So I do have the technical bit. So the way we see it is uh, I have bucketed into the four major areas where we see a lot of patenting activities happening in artificial intelligence domain. One being the natural language processing and what it entails is whenever you are extracting meaningful words out of whatever sentence is spoken or written and then you are using the underlying technology to provide value added services over that. And I think this plays a very important role in financial domain because one of the challenges at least in India we would face is we go to banks, we have huge queues. Now the challenge or the task in front of us is how do we reduce those queues without impacting the customer experience. So there are many workflows that we as a company work upon. For example, let's say if you want an installment on the payment you are making, so how do we basically automate that bit using artificial intelligence so that it makes life easier for you and you don't have to stand in longer queues to take care of that. And since payment industry basically touches interface with every bit, so Jay talked about Uber uh, having those vehicles where you have the artificial intelligence stuff embedded, but ultimately it would end up you making the payment, otherwise you won't be able to get the next cap. So that's where the finance has an important role to play and that also needs to be backed up by artificial intelligence. The second bit is the machine learning aspect and of course the type of patterns you'll mainly see in this is based on a whole lot of testing where you provide a set to the machine and then it gives a desired output. So those are the set of patterns that you'll talk or see in the artificial intelligence domain and the same applies for financial work as well. The third category is the neural networks where you see the deep learning aspects. So for example, you go to an online website, you just take image, uh, let's say you were seeing a promo on a uh, television and you really like that shirt, you can just click that image, upload it, and you'll get to see the results, relevant results with that shirt from where you can buy it. And then of course finance has a role to play in that. And the third, are, or the last one is basically the generic artificial intelligence workflows, which I think I already briefly touched upon. So let's say you go to bank, you want to open an account. Now again, you have to provide so many documents. People sitting at bank are very busy. So you want to automate that process. You go, you interact with the machine. You provide your documents and right there your account is open. And I think that's where we have tried to bring these technologies closer to the market so that any customer can use it. I'm not sure how many of you have used it, but we have a robot which actually takes order whenever you visit a restaurant and it's a very complete or seamless process. You provide your order to them and then you get the delivery again using robotics. So there would be a robot which would come and deliver. You take that food and you click a button and it goes back and at the end you make a payment. So it's a very seamless experience using artificial intelligence. Now the exemplary application areas that we as financial domains are focusing on is mainly the chatbots because we see a lot of customer issues coming up where we have the customer care helplines etc and we are trying to reduce it using chatbots. Example you would have seen on travel websites where now you can easily make a ticket booking just using a chatbot in case you are facing any issue. 
So you don't need to call customer care, just wait on the long IVR menus, and et cetera, et cetera. The other is basically the virtual assistant. So examples of that you see every day in your life, like Alexa, Siri, et cetera. And the advertisements playing these days are pretty nice where you can ask Alexa to change channels, et cetera, et cetera, or order something. So that's where you would see the real application areas of artificial intelligence, how it's making life easier for you. The other thing is basically the purchase predictions where it would make intelligent recommendations or predictions in terms of what all amount you want to spend. If you are going beyond a certain spend category, it would cap that. And also we are experimenting that with the process of authentication. So that's something you'll see coming up in the near future. The last bit here is about the fraud detection. Of course, you don't want to, whenever it comes to money, everyone is cautious. And you don't want to spend money in fraud things. So we have artificial intelligence and fraud systems as well. Now, coming to the IP challenges that we as industry foresee and the measure we typically take to ensure that whatever we are filing, we get them allowed as a patent. So first question that we get from patent offices are mainly that, hey, all you are doing is mere automation of manual process, right? You go to bank, you can still open your account. So what if you enable it to be done by a robot or artificial intelligence backed up computer software? But let me tell you, that's not an easy task to do. There's a lot of underlying technology that goes beyond this. And that's something that whenever we or our outside counsel draft patent application or whenever we are interacting with our inventors, the first question that we always ask them is, is it a mere straightforward automation of what we were doing manually? If not, then you need to bring those things out. And that's, I think, the basic fundamental of patent law that has been existing for ages. The wrapper, I would say, over that keeps on changing where you will categorize it under artificial intelligence, blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the challenges and the solutions I'm talking here about are the core fundamental ones which are existing for ages, and if you stick to them, I don't see any issue in getting such patents allowed in front of patent offices. The other thing is when we talk about the black box, so you provide the test data to a black box, you are expecting certain set of output. So you train those black boxes on that particular aspect that, okay, in real scenario, when customer feeds you this set of data, you get you are supposed to function in this particular way to generate an output like this. If you just provide those level of details in patent application, I'm pretty sure patent office will strike it down because the invention is not in providing the data and getting an output, but the invention is what's happening in the black box. And those technical details are something that needs to be really carved out pretty well in the patent application. The other thing is, the technology for natural language processing has been now existing for ages. So the other set of ideas that you would be doing is basically applying that NLP algorithms onto your particular specific application areas to get a patent. Now, one thing in that is particular, I can take example of installments. So when we try to move the installment process supported by chatbots, we of course need to talk about the technology or the additional steps that we are doing over and above the typical NLP processing. And that's what would make your solution unique and technically enhanced in respect to what's already existing. And lastly, I think you always need to write realistically broad claims as well as something which provides technical aspect. If you just go over broad, I think you would see that you would just read onto any existing NLP patents, which is not a nice way to do. And then the patent office has a plethora of prior art to cite to you. Now, some of the examples that I talked about, I think I already covered this. These are the way forward. So do include more technical details. Talk about the black box or what's happening behind the black box. Also cover the specific application areas and the technology enhancement that you are doing to modify an existing engine to cater to those new application areas. Now I think I'll just skip this, but 
just to give you an idea, I picked this chart from somewhere. So you'd see that most of the artificial intelligence stuff, it would involve these four categories, and these are the top few assignees. Now, the other thing is about the IP filing strain, and if time permits, I'll also touch upon enforcement, as Professor told me, the challenges we see in terms of enforcing it. So when we talk about trends, when the actual technology gets commercialized or comes to you, the research has started several years back, perhaps a decade back. So what you'll see is that right now, if you're talking about broad concepts and workflows, those are already patented, so that won't fly off. So you need to be more specific now, which is closer to the implementation. And as we are implementing it, in terms of robots taking orders from you or automating the installment process, we get to see what all technical enhancement we make, and we call that. The other thing is mainly about the ecosystem that we reside in. So when we talk about payments ecosystem, MasterCard is one technology enabler for our enterprise customers to enable providing services to the consumer. So we would typically not have a product set where we would directly reach out to the end users and provide you that. It's always either through banks or merchants or other business providers. So we would be a B2B2C provider in that case. And what we need to be careful about when we talk about IP in that is the enforcement aspect because it's not the single entity MasterCard who would be doing most of those technical steps which are backed by artificial intelligence. It would be a mix where we definitely need to ping the servers of the banks or the servers of the merchant to get some meaningful information and then run our complex AI-backed algorithms on that again to provide some meaningful recommendations out to these banks or merchants which would then be consumed by the end users. An example being, based on your past spends, how are you going to spend in future and what are the offers relevant to you? So the bank would provide you that or the merchant website would provide you that. But then behind the scenes, it's a ecosystem who is doing that processing. So whenever we have the enforcement issues, I think the way we take care is by the contractual means, where there would be certain sort of indemnity statements, where ultimately the final packaging would be done by our customer banks or it would be done by the merchants. But since we are the technology provider at the back end, so you would try to cover uh, those aspects in the contractual means, where to what extent we indemnify our banks and to what extent we represent them whenever let's say a lawsuit happens or there's some enforcement issue because we are the technology enabler. So that's one key aspect. The other thing is whenever we talk about the back-end engines, we prefer to keep them as trade secrets rather than filing as patents because those are the things which ultimately we are neither sharing with our customer banks or merchants, and neither end user get to see that nor our competitors. That's something that's within that. So. From that perspective, yeah, there's a lot of artificial intelligence backed inventions which are just kept as straight secrets because they are running behind the scenes. Now with that, I think I would just end here and I would have Nick speaker touch upon it. So Excellent. thank you very much.